Welcome back. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today, today is September 11th, 2019. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How's it going there, chat room? Good to see you. Look at all these. Oh my gosh, looks like you've been having some fun over there. What were you doing while I wasn't looking? My goodness. Chat room. Copper Beardy, hello, hello. Svava, what mischief? Oh. We're going to have some mischief today. We're going to integrate JavaScript in C Sharp. It's amazing. Super Viking just resubscribed for two months. Hey, Super Viking. Thanks so much for that resub. Yes, there's going to be a lot of horses in this stream today. I know it. Thanks so much. I appreciate the sub. And we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo. Uh, they're helping folks all over the world train trainers. Build facilities. Wheelchair Sean just resubscribed for four months. And make sure that folks can grow technical careers. Thanks so much, uh, both Sean and Super Viking, for those subs. We'll make those donations. There's going to be a lot of horses today. I know it. Lots and lots. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to end up having to open up that that timeout for the horse sound effect here. Oh my goodness. Uh, Webface, good to see you. Gorin, Hal, Super Viking, uh, howdy. Yes, we already said hello to you. Tagaron, Moist Booty Boy, hello. Yes, we are going to get coding today. Hugo, no, we're not, we're, we're not there yet. We will be. And, um, that UNT Walker, good to see you. Silly Porridge, 
Welcome. So good to see you. We are at 7599 followers. Followers of this of this channel, you know when that number gets to 7600. And then we'll do another sticker giveaway. I have a couple that I have to mail out. We'll do one more here probably today. And uh, we'll get those sent out, those stickers. I'm going to get them sent out this week. Dee uh, Dee Walsh, good morning. So good to see you. Uh, one more sub, says Ultramark. Absolutely. How's it going, Caparino? Caparino's been playing with that JavaScript button. That's who it is. Uh, let's see. Hugo says, horses, I vote nay. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. How's it going, Janescu? Lucky number seven is here. Hello. Oh, we're doing terrific. Um, Q Doggy. Hello, hello. Oh my gosh, Moist, Moist Booty Boy. Booty Boy just gifted five subs. Whoa! Thank you so much for that. That is so awesome. Uh, congratulations, Bricky, Tim Blazer, New York One Sixty Seven, Surly Dev, and Latjor. You just got a gift subscription thanks to our friend Moist Booty Boy, and we're going to make five more donations to Coder Dojo. Thank you very, very much for that. Um, it, it, look at all the emotes going flying by. You're, all of you are going to get 17 emotes that you can use live here on the channel. We're going to make that donation, and uh, you're going to get a purple uh, hat badge to indicate that you're a subscriber, and you get to throw emotes at my face now. It's just that good. Uh, oh my gosh, so much going on. Yeah, hey, so much horse here today. Oh no. The horse jokes have started already. So much love. Yes, indeed. Here comes the tacos. Hype. Just wanted to hear his name. Eh, maybe. Uh, look at all the hype. Oh my goodness. This is terrific. Thank you so much. So, if you're not a follower of the channel, I, I, I ask you, you know, join us. We're going to have a good time. You've seen the chaos already. Click that follow button. It's the little heart right above here, right above the chat room that's embedded in the video over here. And uh, it's completely free to follow, and you'll get a notification whenever we go live. And uh, you're going to help us grow our community. That's something that, that we're proud of, and we want to extend, and we're, we're doing good things here. All of our cheers, all of our subs, we donate to, to worthy causes. And uh, the folks that lead the, the cheering at the end of the month, they get invited to join me on stream for some live coding together. I have a I have a a backup of folks that I need to invite to join us and uh, we're going to get that we're going to get some of those folks in here very very soon. My my September is jammed up with uh .net conf in 2 weeks and TwitchCon after that, but October is wide open. What do you see? We're going to have folks a lot of folks joining us in October. Um let's see. You really enjoy the stream. Fantastic. Um, MBB is always good. If you don't mind, I, I would, I would prefer to use MBB. Yes. So Encoder Dojo is a great program. Yep. So everybody loves tacos. So every time you fire that tacos command, it helps with our sentiment analysis. This number you see right here. That's the sentiment of the chat room live as it happens. As you key stuff into, into chat, it's getting analyzed and we can see the trend. The smiley face shows the immediate uh, effective sentiment, right, of whatever was keyed in. The number is the last minute, an average sentiment of the last minute. Above 50% is positive, lower than that is negative, and the arrow is the trend over the last five minutes. And whenever you fire that tacos command, it always helps that sentiment analysis number. There you go, there's the sentiment description. There it goes. Jeff is just fluent enough in JavaScript to rile the horses up. Indeed. <laughs> Am I the JavaScript expert? I Yeah, I'm just fluent enough. I know enough to be dangerous. What do you see? We're going to have some fun here today. And now Dee Dee's hungry because of all the tacos. <laughs> all right. All right. So we're gonna have we're gonna have some fun today. What what I want to do is I want to take our project we've been working on, where we've been building our widgets. There they go. We've been building widgets uh, for a distributed chatbot. This is a chatbot that lives in the chat room, integrates, and we want to make sure that it can handle multiple channels. We built it with the actor model so that it can be multi-threaded. It can run on multiple hosts and have the uh, framework built for it appropriately. 
to cluster and, and provide redundancy and manage many, many, many chat rooms so we can build for scale and start thinking about things like clustering at some point. And we need to build the widgets that are going to be presented coming off of those interactions with the chat room. So we started working on the concept of a user activity train. Whenever a certain activity happens within a certain time period, that train will grow, whether it's just a counter that increases or we actually start building a widget that has images of train cars that grow and run around the screen or something. We'll figure that out. But in order to build that widget, we need to not only have a screen thing that's going to receive those messages, but we need that plumbing, that that network connection that goes from the user interface, the screen here, back to the chat room. And that's what we're going to build today. The user interface is built using the browser, it's HTML, and it's JavaScript, but we're building this also using Blazor. Blazor lives on top of WebAssembly and C Sharp. So, we're going to integrate the two. We're going to get JavaScript talking to C Sharp, and we're going to get C Sharp on the server, and it's going to be a big old collection, and hopefully it's not too, too confusing. All right, let's see what's going on over here. Um, yes, I know enough to be dangerous. Lucky number seven. Absolutely. Um, when, how did I get into coding initially in life? Asks MBB. Um, that's a great question. That is a really good question. Um, let me bring up a browser because I can kind of answer this with a blog post. Uh, da, 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 da. It's... Um, I can get it from my blog. And, um, hey, thanks so much for the follow. Uh, is that Zitterul? Thanks so much. That should take that number to 7,600. Unless somebody uh, unfollowed. I'm waiting to see the official number on Twitch tick over here. I'm waiting to see that. If it did, oh my gosh, Ultramark. Subway 100 bonus 10, 7,600. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm going to put that down for Ultra Mark. Oh my gosh, Chris M. Jones. Chris Jones, Chris there it is. Chris Jones just resubscribed for 13 months. Thanks so much for the sub. We'll make another donation for to Coder Dojo. Um, yeah, let me show this in just a second here about how I got into coding. And let me get some music playing in the background. Look at the hype. I'm waiting to see that official number tick over here. I have a feeling somebody unfollowed because I see 75.99 on the official here. Um, today I'm going to play some some music to code by here in the background and um, I'm going to go with a favorite. I'm going to play Cyan. This is music that's designed to get you in the flow, get you in the groove so that whatever task it is that you're working on, you can focus on. Whether it's writing code, doing homework, reading documentation, writing documentation, or chores around the house. This will help you get focused and you're going to have a great time with it. Thank you so much to Mr. Carl Franklin, our friend who, who wrote this. You can get your copy at mtcb.pwop.com. Execute the music command in the channel and you can get the link to get your own copy. Thank you so much for the follow, Lazarut. There we go. That's 7600. There we go. We hit it. Yes, in deed. Where is it? Thanks so much, everybody. That's another milestone cross. 7,600 followers. Very much appreciate that. And we need to run a sticker giveaway. But I want to finish answering that question first, right? Because, gosh, we're running around in circles here. So many, so many topics. Squirrel! Um, the question about how did I get involved in coding? How did I get my start? Um, out on my blog, I wrote an article. When did I write this article? In 2015. Oh my gosh, it's been that long. Um, let's go over and I want to show this. Is Did... No, she's not here yet. It, followers of the channel know that my mother likes to drop in and, and watch... And she's going to be tickled when she sees that I'm talking about this. Hey, Raphael. Good to see you. Death Packs. Hello, hello. Um, should we explore YM? Uh, no. No, no. Um, let me head over here. 
This is, of course, my blog, jeffreyfritz.com. Yes, we hit that 7,600 follower milestone. Um, this was huge the day that this happened. I ran for, for a while the Microsoft Web Development blog on MSDN. And I wrote, I wrote the blog post. I helped uh, write and, and publish the blog post announcing Visual Basic support for ASP.NET Core. And I wrote about how that really meant something to me because it meant Visual Basic could run on Unix and Linux machines. And I, I included this little photo of, of my dad and myself when I was very, very young. Um, he taught me basic on a Commodore 64 way back in the early 80s. And um, it, it, it sparked something in me. I, I was six, seven years old. And I really got interested in, in writing software, in, in doing little things to write applications, not even applications, writing games on, on a, a Commodore 64. And what, was, what really landed home for me was um, about this moment was that my father taught me basic on a Commodore 64, even though he was a, he was a, a Unix guy. He, he went to work and he was on big Unix machines, IBM, Sun, and um, here he's teaching basic to, to his kid, and that's not something that he could use or work with at work, so he literally was learning it on his own and teaching me, and um, I got to bring that full circle by bringing basic to the machines that he actually worked on. And, and make that announcement. I, I didn't, I'm not responsible. The folks, the amazing folks at Microsoft that work on the Visual Basic and .NET teams made that happen. But in my position as the community guy who got to make that announcement and help, you know, show folks that you could do this and write demos, um, it, was, it was bringing things full circle. That's how I got started with coding, was uh, my parents, particularly my father, um, really instilled the, this opportunity to, to tinker, change things. It didn't matter if you broke things. And, and I had a great time with this. Uh, it, like I said, learning from a very, very early age and going and developing it from there. So that's how I got started with code. Cool? So there you go. This is the project we're going to be working on today, but I don't want to work on the project just yet. I want to give away some stickers. Because everybody loves stickers. Here we go. Start up the Lash Tools. If you're in the chat room and you want an opportunity to win some stickers, execute exclamation point here. You see it right there. Exclamation point here. Execute that command. It'll put you in the box here, just like these folks. And you'll get your chance to have some stickers sent out to you. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. I will send stickers to anyone, anywhere. The sticker pack has some of the emotes that we have, like the rainbow bearded Clippy, rainbow bearded uh, Octocat, um, the bot with shades. I've got uh, some Super C Sharp in there. I've got some other .NET bot stickers. Can you see those? Can't really see that. It's reflecting. I'll even throw a couple NuGet stickers in there. So there we go. Look at all the here commands. Execute that here command. We'll give it just a few, a few more seconds, and we will roll to see who gets a sticker pack sent out to them. <coughs> Excuse me. I thought I'd mess with you today, chat room. I'm having green apple. So you can see right through it. Look at that. I can hide behind my G Fuel. Ray tracing back of a business card. Oh, that sounds interesting, Bitwhacker, but that's not what we're going to be working on today. I've, I've got another project that we're continuing to work on. But can you do me a favor and share that link in our Discord so we can come back and, and discuss and take a look at it? Offline, that's, that's a little off topic for what I'm going to be doing here today, but that looks interesting. And I want to make sure that I have an opportunity to look at it when I'm, when I'm off stream. Thanks so much, Bitwhacker. I appreciate that. All right, what do you say? Last call, anybody who wants to win a pack of stickers, exclamation point here. These look fantastic on the back of your laptop. All right, here we go. 
There's not much learning to be had doing that. It's complicated mathematically. All right. Let's uh let's do this. Oh yeah. I have uh yeah, Fixter Jake, I did send out yours. Yes. And we're going to send another pack to MBB. Congratulations. Uh, send me your address and I will mail out these stickers. There we go. I just dropped you a whisper. Reply to that and I will have those sent out. I think I'm going to, I'm, I'm flying out to Chicago later today. Um, but, uh, I'll be back and we can have these sent out on Friday. I think we can make that happen. You're welcome. Congratulations. And, uh, Next time we cross 100, 100, the next 100 followers, when we get to 7,700, we'll run another uh, sticker giveaway. Uh, okay. What's next? Let's take a look at this integration. Let's, let's talk about and walk through what we're going to do today with... There's the music. What we're going to do today with this. You can find the source code for the project here on GitHub. Let me set the project. Um, let me come back to your question in a second here, Silly Porridge. Um, integrating uh, and Blazor uh, to create a uh, user activity. Nah, to, create, to create a browser based widget uh, source code that's not a spell source code code at and there's the link there you go oh look at that it appears it appears the chatbot took a took a powder there Try this again. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. And set that project command. There it goes. All right. Very cool. All right. So let me go back and look at these questions. Anyone know where I can find a tutorial to upload an image from a Blazor client to the server without using any libraries or packages? Um... That's interesting. Um, so you're you're going to be making that request. Well, right, you're going to push that onto a server server side. Well, you put it into a service. Um, you should be able to. Well, how are you going to take the file object? I haven't thought about that. It is a normal upload, but I haven't I haven't thought. Spicy too condiment about. just resubscribed for five months. Oh my gosh. Thanks so much for that resub. Five months with us, and we'll make another donation. Very cool. It is an upload, but you... Right? I haven't tinkered with that yet. It's not something I need to do just yet, but um, let's pin that question and come back to it. Can you create a, a, a log a question in the Ask Jeff Anything channel in Discord? And let's see if we can come back to that. Maybe we can come back, come back to that on Friday morning after I do a little research. Definitely something to look at. Oh, thank you, Hugo, for calling out the Discord channel. Um, Takudu asks, why would you integrate JavaScript with Blazor? I thought the whole point of Blazor was to replace JavaScript with C Sharp. Um, so the challenge, the challenge here, and it, it's a very good question, is there are some things where it's easier, it makes sense to... to use JavaScript-based libraries to integrate with some services. And in this case, um, working with SignalR, the JavaScript libraries for SignalR are very well set. They work great. Um, there are not 
there, there are not. There, there, there is not a Microsoft supported library for SignalR clients in Blazor yet. It's not ready. It's not something they're working on just yet. There are things you can do there. Um, oh, thank you, Chris. Um, and it's it's something that you can do um, with some community based libraries. It's available out there, but um, there are places where it makes sense to integrate with an existing JavaScript library. So I'm going to I'm I'm going to force and do that here, so we can talk about it and see exactly how that operation works. Even though eventually it's going to be swapped out in favor of a native Blazor client. So this just gives us an opportunity to discuss and integrate. Ultramark uh, says, I can imagine an entire third-party ecosystem for web components and libraries for Blazor. Completely agree with you. Some of our friends at the, at the component vendors like, like Progress, uh, DevExpress, Infragistics, uh, Radzen, um, um, Syncfusion, they're all building components. Uh, really great components that you can use with Blazor, um, and there's also folks that are that are building open source components that are going to be distributed and available for you to use. So, um, it there is a an amazing ecosystem building up here. Um, if you have a byte stream of the image in Blazor server side, you just need to hit a post API on the server side, and it shoves the bytes in the body. Yes. Agreed, Stelzy, and that's what you're you're going to have to do. Uh, the question in my mind is, how do you get the bytes out of a file object, out of an input file type? So, right, even though you're in Blazor client side, how do you make that happen? So, I'm going to spend some time researching that and come back to that. But our topic today is this integration bit. So we're here at the Pixel Bot, and I already mentioned about what this is and, and how it works. So let's get into this. I had previously started um, working on the widget for this, right? So we've got the user activity train, and this is a, a Razor component. It's here in this standard features project you see here on the left, and it's going to contain all of the C sharp and a reference to the JavaScript that will make this widget go. So how do we do this? How do we get started here? We've identified we need to do these four things. We need to get that the SignalR JavaScript client. Fortunately, it's already available for us in the project. If I remember correctly, it should be, there it is, SignalR. SignalR.js. So I can just reference this JavaScript file and I'll be able to have my SignalR client that I can integrate with and use. Need to attach the client to the hub for the channel requested. Here's where we're going to start to cross that boundary, right? The, the channel requested, that information is going to be parsed and available in C Sharp Blazor client but I need to call into the JavaScript and say, okay, connect to the hub for this channel. Then, and then I need to connect that JavaScript back to the .NET to notify, okay, I'm connected. Now go do whatever the next thing is that you wanted to do to process and continue your event handling. Uh, finally, we, and then. thank you. Uh, we need the SignalR connection methods where it's going to be receiving events. We need to pass those back to our Blazor code so that the Blazor code can be written to appropriately handle and trigger whatever messages, changes in the user interface. How's that sound? What do you think? And then, um, and then, we, and then we dance. Something like that? Does that work? You have to ask me nicely. And we'll pass .NET runtime and JavaScript runtimes around and everybody will be happy. I think that'll work. I think that'll work. I want to move, and I, I think we should write some unit tests to go with this also. I know, I said, I said unit tests. I know, I know. 
Shame. 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 I know. I need to write more unit tests, okay? I know I do. I've, I, I hear you. I know. I know. I think we should. So I'm going to create a uh, view model to go with this. Okay. And I'll call this the user activity train model. User activity train model. Now I, I'm doing this. You can always embed when you're building a, a, a Blazor component. You can embed your C sharp here. I can do whatever, right? Um, I can create a property, right? And great, I have C sharp there. However, I can't <clears throat> easily test this. Um, but I can if I put it in a class that I can inherit from. So I'm going to create this and, oh, is it component base? Is that right? I always get this. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So now this class implements the component base necessary for it to be, right, the, uh, the base for that Razor component, Blazor component over here, and I can indicate that it's coming from over there by saying inherits user activity train model. Cool. So I can get rid of this. I don't need that. Um, I know, Alexo. I know. And I'm purposely not doing that because I want to show how to do the integration back and forth because eventually there will be a Microsoft supported client that does the integration for us. There's also a JavaScript Akka thing, but I don't know if it's working with Akka.net, says Stelzy. That's okay. That's okay. But by integrating this way, we'll have an easy path forward to remove some of this uh, integration code that we're going to write. It's, it's fine. I appreciate that, that the chat room's done a little bit of research on the topic. Um, but absolutely, Mark, this is for some educational purposes here. Very well said. Um, so what I can do, I'm going to come down here to our test. We have a test project called Orchestrator Test. I'm going to add another test project here so that we can put some tests to go with this model. So that's, uh, that's going to be a... Um, it's not a console app. I need a class library. Library. There we go. And um, I need this for .NET Core. Uh, I don't want .NET Standard. I want the .NET Core one. And it's... There it is. It's a little bit tricky to find that because of how these are. Thank you for the follow. Tony Tins. Appreciate you joining us. Um... Where'd it go? Class library. See, I, I wish these were in a little bit clearer order. Alphabetic or something, you know? Uh, there we go. So I will call this uh, Pixelbot Standard Features. Uh, standard Features Tests. I don't want to make it a separate name space, but make it so it's similar. So that you can kind of tell that they go together, you know? All right, and in this project, I am going to add, I'm gonna add, you know what, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Let me just copy these two. I don't need Akka in this because I'm testing components. Uh, not those, here. Um, I'm an elite developer, so I edit project files directly and badly. Um, all the project files for .NET are XML files. And the, the syntax, it isn't too bad. It's human readable. It's something that we can go through and parse and use. And um, I'm creating a group of package references here. So I have an item group. I have a package reference. This is something that's external. It's a library that we're going to include. Go download it and bring it into my project. And copy it in and uh, install it. So by adding those here, it should now have uh, X unit testing abilities here for us to go through. And I can start building classes, building things to exercise and test. Uh, you think there's a X unit template? 
Um, is there? And then? I don't see it. Oh, look at that. X unit test project. So how's it different? Well, wait. X unit test project.net core. X unit. Oh, wait. C sharp, F sharp, VB. Can somebody clip this? I searched for X unit and I have the filter for C sharp turned on, but I still got VB and F sharp projects being returned. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to open that as a, I can't take a screenshot. I can't. The add new project dialog, even though I've filtered by C sharp, isn't filtering by C sharp. New project language filter. And I, it's important to me that, that you see a little bit of, you know what, I'm gonna log a bug here for this. Uh, pixel bots, let's get out of this dialog, let's finish this. Standard features, I wanna delete that project over there. Um, tests, I'll stick an underscore at the end, we'll end up removing that. Um, so I'll delete this. Yes, remove it. All right, and I'm gonna open that issue real quick. That the language filter doesn't work. Oh, you got a clip for me, fantastic. All right, search for uh, language filter. File new language build. Well, there you go. Doesn't apply when searching. Closed as a duplicate. Okay. Well, where is it duplicated? Um, where's the duplicate? Give me a link to the duplicate so I can vote for it. F sharp templates show up in new project when searching under investigation. Yes. Opened by our friend, Mr. Dan Raw. Um, good. I am logged in. This is by design. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Completely disagree. Um, Searching and applying a filter and, and uh, requesting a filter to be applied does not mean ignore this filter because I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> It makes things confusing when filters are not applied. <laughs> you know, like, come on, come on. The expectation is that your C-sharp results should always be, but F-sharp will still show up if it matches on other dimensions. No, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Sorry, sorry, friends. But when I search for something, I don't want things that clearly aren't that showing up. Like, they should at least disable the filter to control when searching if that is the case. Uh, right. Yeah. I like what Hugo's suggesting. What should happen maybe is to say there's more templates available with other languages and filters. I like that. That is a good response. That is a very good response. I'm going to amend my comment, which is now missing. Yep, there I am. Okay. Uh... 
guess I, I guess I'm done. Okay. So, um, all right, moving on then. This is the reference documentation we're going to go back to, but I want to, I want to make sure that I remove. Where is it? No. Um, let's open folder. Let's get rid of the other project. This one. I'm going to unload this project. I'm just going to remove it and I'll re-add it. Rename. Rename. Boom, look at that. Oh, that didn't do what I wanted it to. Add it to test. And it just added the file. Oh, that's... That would have been handy to be able to do that. But I guess not. Um, all right. E -d 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 this. And it was Pixelbot standard features tests. Yep, this one. There we go. And... Uh, properties. Look at that. It updated the namespaces for me and everything. All right. So over here, get rid of that. And now we can start writing tests to exercise my standard features. I'm going to particularly add a folder for the user activity train. So we can put all of our tests for that, for that widget in one place. Thank you for the follow, uh, Gralden. Welcome. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Fantastic. I've got a whole bunch of swag and things being made for TwitchCon, and I just got notification that the rest of it is now being being made. Hey, look at that, Didi. Thank you so much for that tweet. Um, as soon as I hit 8,000 followers, the beard becomes rainbow. It's back. Absolutely. When we get to 8,000 followers, right, I will dye the beard rainbow again. Uh, is that, is that supposed to be, is that Menti? The Bane of Programming. That didn't do what I wanted it to do. Yes. Right? So, yeah, here, I'll open, right, I just saw this tweet come across from our friend the dd walsh there it is favorite morning routine tuning in he's smart well smart enough to put green g fuel in here and make my make things disappear look at that Whoa. yeah thank you so much for that i'll share that link in the chat room if you want to follow dd and learn more she's doing some really great stuff with the folks at mobilize.net over there Thank you so much for your support, DD. Um, yeah, look at the hype. Love the hype. All right, so I need to make sure that the standard features test project that's going to be doing doing my tests, I need to add a reference reference to the other project, which is standard features. I'm also going to need it for the domain, which is this one. All right. So now I can start building out tests in here for the model. So, first off, before I go any further, I want to account for Ultramark's cheer. That was 110. Ultramark. And today's the 11th. Um, what time is it? We missed the time, but... Um, I did want to make sure that I that I said something today, since it is the the anniversary of it, it is September 11th. Um, I don't know where you were in this world when that day happened. Um, I was working for a startup at the time, and it was my job to report in early. And um, I just want to take a, a minute here to to say a few things. It was it was my job to report in early, and I um, the startup we were. I was at was focused on financial services. At that time, I, I showed up early. I was the first one in and I helped manage our data integrations, the data that 
that we sent back and forth between different systems. Um, from our production website to our back end uh, financial services that were monitoring and tracking accounts. So I would show up early and mon monitor, make sure all of those data integrations flowed properly. So I was at the office at six in the morning, uh, Eastern time, when, when the tragedy, the tragic event happened. Um, and it was not uncommon. We had, we had televisions in, not monitors, not LED uh, flat panel screens like we have today here. But I, we had tube televisions around the office because we were, we were a financial company. We were monitoring the financial markets. And folks started coming into the office and saying something, something weird happened. There was something crashed into the tower in New York. And because we worked so closely with folks on Wall Street and certainly in the World Trade Center, um, many, of our, many of our friends, uh, many of our colleagues at that company lost, uh, lost loved ones, lost friends in, in the, uh, the tragedy that happened that day. It was, um, it was hard for a lot of people that I worked with. I didn't know anybody personally at that time that was, that, that were in the towers. Um, but, uh, it's definitely something that, um, it, it changed, it changed a lot in this country, in the States, changed it a lot in the world. Um, and I think it's important just to take a few minutes and, and remember that today. So, um, wherever you are, you know, don't take for granted that, that you're going to an office and everybody's going to be safe and come home every day. Uh, traveling, don't, don't take for granted when you get on a plane that everything's going to be safe and, and you're not going to have any kind of issue. Um, take some time and appreciate every moment that you have with your loved ones and whoever, because, uh, nothing's guaranteed. It was a very strange day indeed, Stelzy. Yeah. So, um, being here in Pennsylvania, um, I was close enough and like I said, I was impacted certainly with the folks in, in New York City, but um, I was, uh, I've, I've been to the, the sacred ground at, at uh, Shanksville, Pennsylvania here. Um, it's a little bit further on the western side of the state. It's a long drive from where I am. But uh, whenever I go and visit uh, Pittsburgh to speak to user groups, to, to meet with customers, I make, it, I make it a point to stop and see that, that sacred ground where Flight 93 um, made its final, uh, final land, landing place. Um, it, it was hard for us as a company, at that company I was working with at the time, because as a dot-com startup, you, you relied on having good customers that would come back again and again. And um, it dramatically changed the business model for that company because they, they quite literally lost customers in the accident. So, yeah, being, being in schools, seeing it on television when the planes hit, it was tremendous. This is, this is for our generation. Yeah, the, the answer to where were you when Kennedy was shot or where were you when, when they landed on the moon? Where were you when the towers were hit? Where were you when, when the Challenger incident happened? So... Okay, so thanks. I just wanted to take a, a minute or two and um, just reflect on on that tragic incident. So, all right. Thank you for the follow. I want to make sure I acknowledge that. I appreciate that follow, Yandesu. I appreciate you joining us. Um. All right. <coughs> so. Let's talk about how we're going to integrate with JavaScript. <clears throat> you actually, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. All right. Um, we have access to the JavaScript runtime. It can be injected into our Razor components through something called the JS runtime. DB context user. It's a shame when an American is trying to be politically correct. Um, I want, I want to make sure that I say things that are sensitive because I know there are folks that are watching from all over the world. Um, I also know that, that I, 
I represent a company and um, I there are a lot of stakeholders <laughs> behind me on this side of the camera so I do need to make sure that uh, I handle things appropriately so it is it, it is being respectful I want to be respectful to as many folks as possible yes um, so we receive a JavaScript runtime that we can interact with there it is IJS runtime represents an instance of the JavaScript runtime to which calls may be dispatched. What does that mean? What does it, this is literally a way for us to reach across and I'm just going to call it JS runtime and actually execute JavaScript methods from our code by injecting the interface here. This means that I can mock it out in my tests. I can replace it with something that looks like the JavaScript runtime. Isn't exactly it, but for the purposes of testing our code, looks like it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Snoopa Loopy. I appreciate the kind words. Yes, yes, first class. That's what we always try to be first class here. Absolutely. Rocket Propelled Freeman, good to see you here. I'm not going to put Gritty in that chat room because if I did, you're of course going to... You're going to freak out if you see too much gritty there in the chat room, okay? It's... Uh, look at all that gritty! Anyways. That's an ongoing thing that that comes up whenever I see Rocket Propelled Freeman and other channels. Here comes gritty! <laughs> um... Um... I'm not trying to play it down at all, DB context user. Not at all. Just trying to be respectful to as many folks as possible. So, um, all right. So we by <clears throat> declaring a property to receive the JavaScript runtime. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh man. I decorate it with this inject attribute here. This is a way for us to tell the C sharp, uh, the, we use the C sharp language, these attributes, to decorate and tell the runtime that's hosting this component, you need to inject, you need to provide an object of this type for us to use. This is a little bit of dependency injection that happens. It's an architectural concept that allows you to get the objects you need into your class so you can reference and use them at that time thank you for the follow crazy dinosaur 1869 welcome um hey and thank you for the host yon lions dacron hey good to see you so yep let's write some code so i'm receiving the javascript runtime i've got that here so when i initialize my code right when i initialize my component um, where is it? On initialized async here. So I get that completed for me. When my code is initialized, I need to now <clears throat> connect to the server and start my um, my connection, right? I need to start the, the connection to the SignalR hub that will be sending us information about changes in status here. So um, I need to make that connection do the thing go get it um so how do i do that um, <laughs> um let me close some of these other things this is we're going to start with the follower hub as the first one that i think we connect to because hmm hang on We're going to have different hubs that we're going to want to connect to based on the different types of activities that we're tracking. The original purpose, one of the ideas with the user activity train here is I want to be able to, to maintain a train for whether it's followers, subscribers, or che cheers, or something else. But those three felt like the right place to start. Um, and how do we know which hub to connect to if we have different hubs for different types of notifications. I think what we'll end up doing is having 
different notification methods that we're listening for and triggering appropriately based on our configuration. I think that works. DB context user, you're inferring things that weren't said and and I've already addressed. So I, I'd appreciate if you'd stand down. And thank you, Crazy Dinosaur. Good to see you. Oh, what's that? What's that trophy mode? Porsche. I'm. We're we're done. We've moved on. Um. Okay. So I'm going to receive. I need to send a message over to the JavaScript client that's going to do the connection and integrate with our hub that's going to provide that um, that interaction. So over here I have the follower hub and it has the an iFollower client interface that has new follower. I feel like I want to rename this to user activity hub so that when one of these activities, new follower, new subscriber, new cheer happens, I handle that appropriately here. So I'm going to do an F2 rename refactor here and let's call this user activity hub and you see it even renamed the class here I and let's call this not follower client let's call this I user activity client so we have new follower as a method we can call here uh, new subscriber string new subscriber name and I think we also want to put a number of months to go with that uh, number of months so we can handle and pass that information along also um, and new cheer string um, you know what there's also a line of text that comes with this too so we'll have string um, cheerer name so we get the name of the person who cheered int amount cheered because they're in integers you don't have decimal numbers of bits it'd be really weird if you could cheer half a bit um, and the message for that all right so now I've got a user activity client that's a little bit bolder that has a little bit more to go with here um, <laughs> there we go the world's cutest doggo nice nice uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. all right How's it going, Azure Koi? So now this is a little bit wider and this user activity hub here, right? It's referenced in my startup class and I had it mapped, I think, to listen on a route. Yeah, follower hub. Let's call this user activity hub so it matches. So this is the location that I want to connect to and listen. And I'm going to do it from the JavaScript that goes with this. Now, here's where things start to get a little different. Um, I need to set up a connection to the SignalR hub with JavaScript, but the JavaScript is being delivered on my page, on my initial HTML page, which is, is this one it? Nope, not that one. Um, not components, pages, there it is, right? So the eight, the JavaScript is being delivered right there. And we've already added this one here to do the chat log. Um, and adding the script files at this point means that Anybody who connects into the application is going to get all the JavaScript loaded on their machine at once. Um, you think an int, int64, is big enough? Yes, 2 billion is going to be plenty. I think there is a limit to the amount you can cheer. Snoopaloopy asks, could you use SystemNet WebSocket and avoid JavaScript SignalR altogether? 
Yes, and that's something that folks at Microsoft are working on. For right now, to use the supported libraries and to also learn about the JavaScript runtime interaction, we're gonna go this way with the full expectation that we'll rip this out when the full client is made available. Good, very good question. And I, I wanna make sure that uh, you understand that we're gonna be changing this later. Um, I'm gonna call this user activity JS. So we'll create a JavaScript file that will handle, I don't wanna publish JS, I wanna add feature suggestion. It'd be nice, it, we already detect when we're in like a, uh, in a controllers folder here, that it starts to give you information about add a controller, right? Add, and the first thing up here is controller. If I'm in a folder called JS and I right click and I go to add, it'd be cool if it detected and made the first option here under add was add JavaScript file. Just a little thing to short circuit adding that file. You know what I'm saying? Make it a little bit quicker to get in there because otherwise I got to go down here to add item and go find JavaScript and it's not in my C-sharp one over here. So yeah, I got to go, f I got to go find JavaScript. And then? Um, click on it, give it a name, right? And what was the name I gave it? User activity? And uh, lower U, there we go. And I'll put all my stuff to manage the user activity in here. Um, for subs, do you want to track I use? Stop. Well, maybe we'd like to let them know about it at some point. Sure. But let me follow up with Hugo here. Uh, he says, for subs, do you want to also track use the number months subbed in a row or just total months? Oh, good point, Hugo. Good point. In our in the client that we created over here for the hub, there's now not just the number of months, but we also have... Um, uh, number of months in in a row. Yeah, that's now a thing too. Good point. Good point. All right. Um, what is it? It's a it's an iffy, right? Look at that. Um, and we get the automatically executed. Uh, enclosure here so I can build out my objects appropriately. So, why not TypeScript? Because um, I feel like JavaScript. Why not? Um, can certainly do that, but it's not something that I need for right now. Um, okay. So I've got this enclosure so that I can have things in the scope of this object and only publish them out to the full global scope when I need to. So. Yep, short would have been enough, enough for the parameters. Here, I could have made these shorts, right? Um, and it's actually 32-bit. Um, but I, these could have been shorts, absolutely. Um, or even, eh, not a byte, but they could have been shorts. It's it's not going to make that much of a difference. Um, it's going to be cast into a string and sent, and it's going to be two bytes anyway. So, all right, just keeping an eye on things. We should have a sound for TypeScript. <laughs> we should have a sound for TypeScript. Okay, that could be a thing. Sure. Um, it's not a bad idea. So I feel like I should have an object here that represents the user activity and attach everything to it, right? So if I make this, right, it, do I do that like this? Function user activity, and I start attaching things to this so that when I reference it from over here, it's namespaced and I would say user activity dot, right? I would be able to say, something right um right i could say this dot foo equals one or whatever 
right? So now I can say this dot foo, and I've actually got an object here, right? I can do that, right? Maybe record Anders Heilsberg yelling out developers, developers, developers. Ah! <laughs> what about the Flyers goal horn? No, no. Or or Mads, Mads Chris, uh, not Mads Christensen, Mads Torgerson. Um. No, yeah, he's he's .net, not TypeScript. I have been I have hanging out here. I, I'm going to show you this. Let me let me squirrel for a second. Squirrel. I have hanging out here. Um, a sound effect that I'm dying to use. I'm Scott. I'm new here. And use that for an alert. For followers, I also have this one. Let me add some value. I like the "let me add some value." I think th I think that's one that uh, um, our friend in the red shirt, Mr. Guthrie, would appreciate. Um, but having having Anders yelling "developers, developers, developers," that's that's pretty funny. I don't. I, he would never do it. Never do it. But that that would be pretty funny. I need to figure out how. T Chad room. Let me get your opinion. If I were to replace and welcome, uh, Kamurla. I appreciate you joining us. If I were to replace the the cheer alert that appears here with Mr. Guthrie saying, "Let me add some value." And a gif of that. What do you think? Would that be would that be a fun replacement instead of Mr. Balmer uh, applauding? Right, I think that's what the chair alert. No, it's no, it's uh, Neil Patrick Harris throwing throwing confetti. What do you think? Can you show me a one in the chat room if you like that? Uh, yeah, Scott Guthrie saying holding a microphone and saying, "Let me add some value." So, like that? Okay. All right, I will try to get that running for our next stream. I think I can make that happen. Are you Anders Microsoft to get throws a one on there? There you go. I'm no flyers. I'm no flyers here. Everyone would like Scott in the chat. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take that as a as a to do here. Uh, let me add some value. And we'll make that the new cheer uh, alert. So. I is Scott in the chat right now? No, no, no. Oh my gosh, hang on. Stop the press. Hang on. JAF1021 is here. I have... Um... I'm... I have a new welcome for JF1021. Can you can you bear with me for a second here, chat room? The fanfare that we had yesterday was a little over the top. So I found a better... Yes! I have a better welcome for JF1021. Here, here it is. Hey, Ma! We need some meatloaf! We want it now! The meatloaf! What are you doing? I never know what she's doing. There. There you go. Welcoming my mother with some meatloaf. Absolutely. That's a thing. It's totally a thing. I need to turn that up relative to the other sound effects. So there we go. Welcome. Good to see you. It, Mom, you missed it. At the beginning, earlier in the stream, I had a question about how did you get involved? How did you get started in programming? And I went and referenced uh, that blog post I had from a few years ago now. Um, with the picture of uh, Dad and I, and uh, writing, writing a little bit, playing uh, with the Commodore 64. Yes, my mother. That's right. How many other streamers welcome their mother to their stream with meatloaf? Hey, Ma, can we get some meatloaf? We want it now. The yeah. meatloaf. What's she doing? I never know what she's doing. I don't know what she's doing. She's somewhere else, doing her thing, watching on her phone or on her tablet. But she stopped by to say hello. See that? Exclamation point meatloaf should be a soundbite. Uh, disagree. 
I can only take so much of that one. <laughs> so yes, Gralden, that's that's my mother. Um so uh let's see here. See that? Um And I'm, I'm I'm sorry, DB context user. I'm yeah. I'm not going to. I'm I'm going to deny that message. I appreciate what you're what you're saying, but um, uh, that conversation is over. Um, Why yes. Do scuba divers fall backward out of the boat. Cause if they fell forward, they'd still be in the boat. That's a good point. Thank you for the cheer, Carrie. Appreciate that. Oh my gosh, 500 bits. Very nice. Thank you. And we'll make another donation to Coder Dojo. Um, and and um, JAF1021 is here to make sure to keep C Sharp Fritz in line and not say JavaScript too much. Yes, there's a lot of JavaScript we're writing today. All right? All right? Oh my goodness. Um, let me record that cheer. Thank you so, so much. All right, and that was, that was our friend Carrie. Good to see you, Carrie. I have, I have our jerseys. I have the team jerseys. Oh yes, Ed's very good point. Um, thank you, Ultramark. A, a reminder, we're in September. If you're a new subscriber, it, or, or you're thinking about subscribing, it's half price. And the folks at Subway will pick up the rest of the tab for you to subscribe to the channel and gift subs. They'll pick up, I think that it's with gift subs also. They'll pick up the other, the rest of the tab. And if you cheer with the Subway emote more than 10 bits, they'll chip in an extra 10% in your, uh, for your sub. Um, you did hit a resub yesterday, and it says you're not subscribed. That's weird, Michael Jolly. Very weird. Should I should I get the? I'm gonna squirrel one more time, and we're gonna get back into doing this integration. Squirrel. Thank you. Uh, no worries. Should I grab the jersey? I have the jersey right over here. Would you like to see the the real live coders jersey? I'm gonna go get it. Give me one second. The, let Fritz's chair entertain you for a second. Hang on. No, the chair, the chair doesn't tell jokes. Sorry. No, I send jerseys. <laughs> I'm sending jerseys out. I've got 50 of them in a box over there. This is the Live Coders jersey. Check out the back. Oh my gosh. Very, very cool. And we're going to be handing those out over the next two weeks. A couple folks that aren't going to be able to make it to TwitchCon. I'm going to see if I can get them sent out to you so you can wear them for .NET Conf. Developers, 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 developers. Content Lab IO. Yes. Oh my gosh. They sponsored us. They're helping pay for the jersey. So there's a... There is a sponsor patch in the corner. It's not a patch, but it's printed. There you go, you can see Content Lab. So, I think we're gonna be doing another run of those jerseys here in a little bit. And the folks at Custom Esports made those. They're helping us set up an affiliate uh, store. So other folks that may want to get your own Live Coders jersey if, as a supporter, we're going to make those available to you. I need to figure out exactly how that's going to work, but we're going to get that put together. But um, Carrie and Michael Jolly, and I think there's one or two other folks um, on the team that are going to be speaking as part of .NET Conf. I want to make sure you have your jersey so you can wear it as part of .NET Conf. Um, I'll reach out to you in private on Discord. Get your address so I can get that in the mail to you. 
Um, but somebody on the Live Coders team is getting his jersey tomorrow. He doesn't know it yet. Don't tell him. So, um, yeah, really good people. A C patch would have been really good on my jersey. Oh, wow. I... I was very much considering, for those of you that don't know, in, uh, in hockey, in <clears throat> they now do it in, in professional American football in the NFL, um, they put a patch with a C to indicate who the captain is. In hockey, they have A's that they give out to the alternate, to the assistant captains. Um, I was going to pull a fast one and was going to put a C on our friend Suze Hinton's jersey. and uh put an a on my jersey and uh i didn't do it i didn't do it but i <laughs> a c sharp patch <laughs> that would have been pretty neat um but the level of customization between jerseys maybe that's something we can look at for the 2020 jersey see so this is a dark jersey this is the right this is the home jersey you wear your dark colors when you're at home I think we need a light colored jersey for next time yes no op cat she's gonna be returning to streaming and uh, she inspired a lot of us to get started streaming so she's got a jersey coming oh and some other things too all the live coders that make it to dot net con for getting a little something extra Thank you for the follows. Who was the, who followed there? DL Mousy, thank you. <coughs> so let's get back into this. Let's start writing some code here so we can cross that boundary. Call our JavaScript from our C sharp here. So we have our we'll have a user activity object that's available inside of our code because this object will be built and available uh, client side for us because I included it inside of our index razor. Uh, not index razor index H CS HTML over here. So I need to start building out. Well, here are the methods to connect and listen for user activity. There goes my voice. My gosh. Today you learned all about jerseys watching a coding stream. Yeah, Ultramark, you learn things. You come here, you want to learn about code, you learn things. You know, it's all good. Bazinga. So, all right. backing up I need to add a method here to connect to the server so let's say this dot connect and let's make that a function and it's always going to connect to the same server so I need to add some code that will connect use the uh, use the signal our client library and do that interaction I don't know what all is going to be here yet um to connect to the hub for this channel i need to receive the channel that i'm going to be passing along here so um yeah, yeah. Th this is a lot of javascript absolutely um oh and my voice is starting to sound a bit hoarse that was pretty good that was pretty good um, it, you folks are loving that JavaScript command today. And, and sentiment is extremely high. Love seeing that. I'm glad everybody's having a good time. That is terrific. Thanks so much. So I'm going to receive the channel and go connect to it. I don't know exactly what this looks like yet, but the integration with that is from here. On initialized, go do the connection. Go. Do the thing. So... Um, what does that look like? Well, I need to reach into my JavaScript runtime and I'm going to execute a method over there. So I'm going to invoke asynchronously a method over on the other side. And this returns a value task. So you're going to have write an indicator of if anything was returned from JavaScript. I don't really care. Um, and I'm going to make this async as well. But I'm going to invoke the method that I'm going to invoke is going to be useractivity.connect. Useractivity.connect, and I need to pass in to that connect, um, right, the name of the channel that I'm going to. Well, 
I don't know the name of the channel. Um, da, 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 and I should. Why are we? What don't you like there? I don't have any arguments to pass. Oh no, I do have arguments to pass, don't I? That's interesting. Invoke async. Do I need that? No. I should be able to do it like that. Why is this not? Uh, no overload takes one argument. Well, fine. Be that way. No, it's a params. So if I do that, and this, now why am I still getting the red underline? What don't you like? Um, that's weird. Do I have to do that? Still doesn't like that. Okay. Really? Do I need to do that? I shouldn't have to do that. No. That's weird. You don't think I need these parentheses? Well, then I'm specifying the arguments that I'm passing, right? In which case, right, it's going to be a new object array, or actually it's an array of objects. So I'm gonna pass whatever the channel name is that we're connecting to. I don't know what that is yet, but it's it's going to be a parameter that's loaded on this. Yeah, it's a parameter. Uh, string channel name. And this is a property that's going to be... It's not a bind property, right? Um, shoot. Right, this is... Yeah, I thought it was a property. Right? Why am I blanking on this? When I have features, hang on. Right, I've got a property. I'm not in, well, it is being injected, but I'm not injecting it with the JavaScript, with the uh, dependency injection. This is a, a parameter that I want to receive, right? Configuration model. Yeah, it's, it's a parameter, that's what I'm thinking of. So over here, yeah, channel name like that. So now if I go back over to the feature object, not this, no, this, there, channel. Let's call this uh, channel name. So it will be received there, right? So I've specified this is the route that you're listening on. What's inside the curly braces, this is a template that it's going to capture and pass it into this parameter, channel name, here. So I'll have the channel name there. So we're going to tell the JavaScript, invoke asynchronously, user activity dot connect, pass in the argument channel name. And we've still got a stupid thing here. What do you mean specifying the type arguments? Object args params object array of arguments. Oh, fine. If I do no, move you. Do that. That feels kind of weird that I have to explicitly give it an object array, and that still didn't go away. Really? Do I have to do? How much more specific do you need me to get here, Visual Studio? You know, this goes away because it's async down here. That should run. Specify the re return value as an object is the suggestion from Mark. Jeez. All right, whatever. Try invoke async void as I have no return type. Is there really? Invoke void async. Hmm, okay. That works. I like that better. Okay. It feels strange, but okay. Silly Porridge asks, is this preview 9? Yes, this is ASP.NET Core 3, preview 9. Uh, Gralden 
asks, is the inject attribute performing dependency injection? Yes, it is. This is telling the uh, the Blazor runtime <coughs> that we need to do dependency injection at the time this model object is requested. We need to inject an object of type JavaScript runtime. So um, that does make more sense, but it's weird that there's a secondary one there. Okay. So now I've got a method that will invoke asynchronously user activity dot connect, which is inside of this JavaScript and it is this object passing in the channel. So I know how to to activate that. I've already got a little bit of code written that will do that connection here. Let me throw a use strict up on top. That's a great idea. And let's do this. And I'm going to end up doing a connection.start here. So this connection, signal our new hub connection builder with URL and the URL that I'm going to came out of startup. That's the wrong project. If there's two projects that have the same object in it, I would hope that it keeps me in the one that I'm currently in when I control Q. So I'm going to go to there, configure some logging at, at trace level, build, and I should have this connection be available outside of this. Let's make that available inside the scope of this function. So now I can say... Uh, I don't want to... There we go. Now it knows what that is. So now this connection object is available within scope of the user activity. It's hidden. It's not exposed outside of it. It's private to inside this block. But I'm able to access it from within this function. So if I'm connecting, there's my connection. And I'm going to do other, right? Uh, set up the event handlers for the various uh, methods from... Uh, the, from the user activity client, right? I need to do that there. And eventually we're gonna say connection dot start, right? Isn't that what I'm doing? Dur, 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 dur. Yep, catch and log the error. Let's do that. So we're gonna start the connection to the catch if there's any kind of an error and we're just gonna log it out to the console. We could do other things with that. We could use the service, something like um, like Railgun that we saw a few weeks ago to actually trap those errors and log them. There's other services out there as well, including things with um, with Azure and uh, uh, what's it called? The analytics that are on Azure. It's I'm blanking on this. The, the service that's there, you can wire that up to track and handle those errors as well on the client side. But I'm doing this connection. I'm receiving this information. I don't have the .NET runtime available to here so that I can appropriately raise back and send information into the .NET runtime, call a method over on .NET inside my WebAssembly code that says this event happened. So how do I do that? How do I pass that information back across the boundary? App Insights, that's the name of the service. Thank you, Coded Beard. I completely blanked on the name of the product. That's, there's a lot of products. Um, okay. So this is where I need to go back over here to do JavaScript interop and figure out and make sure that I have this right in my head, how to get this. So I'm going to be invoking .NET, invoking .NET methods from JavaScript functions. Easy for me to say. So I'm going to have JavaScript invocable here that has, right, that that's, this is a method inside the component that I'm interacting with. And then I can say .NET .invoke method async and be able to access that object to do whatever thing it is. Now, 
This is going to be accessing the .NET object, the Razor object that's running on this page. So I don't need to pass things like the channel back to it. It already knows what it is. We're already operating within the context of that. So I don't need to capture... Oh, I didn't put the channel name on the end of this. Yeah, we're writing some JavaScript. That's right. Hey, little e-blaster. Good to see you. Silly Porridge asks, could you explain the difference between console.writeline in the Blazor con client cons and console.log, debugger, and console write line? Um, so where you see console.error here, right? This is a JavaScript method to interact with the console and write out a message. And when you write this message into the browser console, it will be highlighted in red. It'll be indicated as an error to the JavaScript console. From um, our Blazor components, like here, if I do a console.writeline here, right? This just writes out a value to the console and it has the same interface as the system.console. So I don't have a way necessarily here, at least off the top of my head, to say, well, maybe I do have the way to say right to the standard error output. And I haven't tried it, but I'm assuming that that will actually trigger and execute the same error formatting inside the browser. Debug.writeline only goes to the debugger. It only runs when you have the debugger attached. When you compile for release mode, all of that stuff that says debug dot gets compiled out. It gets ignored in the final uh, final release. I don't understand your question, New Coder 101. How do you make how do you make how do you indent a line in Visual Studio Code? Hit Tab. I'm not I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, okay, continuing on here. So not that here. So I've connected. I also need the ability to stop the connection. Um, this is important because when we dispose of our of our widget, because you've navigated away, you've gone somewhere else, we need to stop the connection. So we need to make sure we do that as well. So let's go back over to user activity and let's add the other side of this to do this dot stop. And this is going to be a, another function. I don't need to give it any kind of input arguments, but um, right, it's just connection stop. connection dot stop right and it's lowercase so that should work now I need to make sure that this is called when my when my component is goes out of scope so I'm also going to mark this as I I'm not typing very well today disposable there we go and implement that interface so I have a dispose method here and should use the disposable pattern, shouldn't I? Rats. All right. And let's use, so the dispose pattern that you're gonna see this implement here, make sure that, makes sure that this is always called and frees unmanaged resources, like our JavaScript. So right now we're making sure we don't do dispose twice. Anything that's in managed state, we're gonna do up here. We're gonna free the unmanaged resources here. And well, I don't have large fields to set to null. But what I do need to do is I need to uh, JS runtime invoke invoke void async, and we're going to say uh, user activity dot stop like that. There we go. I need to implement a finalizer. A finalizer in C sharp is something that runs when the object is destroyed, right? When this object is released, because we need to dispose and make sure this is stopped, um, when this object is cleaned up, if you didn't dispose of it, let's dispose. So, real simple pattern to just make sure that dispose is always called, even if you don't call it. Format code, so you can see the dot line at close. Oh, you mean the, the indentation markers here, like this. 
Um, that is a configuration setting in Visual Studio Code. Yeah, the indent helper lines. That's a configuration option that you can set. Um, do a, uh, uh, what is it, control P. Look at your configuration and look for, yeah, they're called indent helper lines. And it will draw those lines for you in Visual Studio Code. This is Visual Studio 2019 that I'm using. And I have these turned on in the options. Um, so, Nico Like Live, welcome. Uh, rainbow indent, yep. It's not very often that you see it or need it, but because this is an unmanaged, right, that interaction on the inside the JavaScript is an unmanaged resource. It's not something that .NET can clean up. Um, I need to be able to reach out and make sure that that is cleaned up. Otherwise, you're going to continue to use memory and network resources in the browser. We need to be we need to be good. We need to be good programming citizens and clean up after ourselves. So it's one thing to just say dispose and make sure that all of our things are, are cleaned up, but these things that do need, because they're outside of, outside of .NET, we need to make sure that those are called. So, all right, so I've got the connect, I've got it uh, going over there. I need to make sure I'm passing in the appropriate channel name here. So we're gonna pass along as a channel argument the name of the channel we're connecting to. So let me go back over to the JavaScript. We're going to go to user activity hub and we're going to pass in the name of the channel. So I'm going to change this instead of quotes to back text because we're going to do a little string interpolation here and we want to bring in the channel. Um, and it's it should be channel equals. So now that'll connect out to the user activity hub passing in that the name of the channel we're requesting is whatever was passed into this argument. So it'll configure that connection. We need to set up these event handlers and start the connection. Good stuff. Cool. I appreciate you supporting the requests about the extensions and those features. Thank you, chat room folks. Always nice to welcome and help out some folks there. Yeah, within Visual Studio Code, you can find it in the extensions market. There's also the ability to look at the extensions market through the web interface. If you go to, it's like market.visualstudio.com, or if you go visualstudio.com, there's an extensions link there, I believe. Right? Visual Studio, I'm not going to go visualstudio.microsoft.com, just visualstudio.com will get you started. Easy place to start. Yeah, marketplace. If you go there, it'll take you to Marketplace Visual Studio, and you can choose what you want to look for. So Visual Studio Code, and you can search for the extension here, and it'll tell you exactly how to install it, download and install it in your copy of Visual Studio Code. Yeah, thank you, Hugo and Michael Jolly, for, for sharing that. Yes, Mads Christensen has created lots of these extensions. Um, so... All right, um, so I, I can connect to the service. I can stop the service. Um, I need to set up the event handlers and pass information back over here that, hey, this thing happened. So let me go back over. Um, the invocable code, it has set up as public static methods here to do that interactions, to do those interactions. I thought I could pass an yeah, instance method call. Pass the .NET instance to JavaScript by wrapping it in a .NET object reference instance. The .NET instance is passed by reference to JavaScript. Invoke .NET instance methods on the instance using the invoke. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. When the trigger .NET instance method say hello button is selected, blah, 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 blah. I want to pass... .NET object reference dot create ah okay so this is how we pass that reference object back okay uh, Flav Creations asked have I used IntelliJ no uh, I have not used IntelliJ 
Yes, I am on the Microsoft team. Uh, so is Mad Mads Christensen is on the Microsoft team as well. Yes. Thank you for the file, Goliath. Appreciate you joining us. Okay. So I've got... When I call this connect, do I all... Because this is really where I start that. Do I pass in this object here? I could. Hey, uh, protopoly.com. Protopoly.com. Is it protopoly or is it protopoly? Let me know. Where's the accent on that? Good to see you. Welcome. Um, I feel like I should pass during the connect the object, right? This object. Protopoly. All right. We'll work with that. Thank you. Um, so let's call this the component. Let's call this, yeah, whatever, right? And I can store a copy of that so I have it. So I can make those references back and forth, right? So if I just say component equals component, so I store a copy. When I set up the event handlers down here, I'll be able to reach directly into that and execute. So, all right, I'm storing a copy back over here. Right, I haven't even written any HTML yet. This has strictly been C-sharp talking to JavaScript. Um, so when I call this, right, it was a new dot net object reference. There we go. Uh -huh. And I'm going to create a reference to this. Now, wait a sec. I already did that. Right? Can I create an instance of the static class? Uh, oh. Alright, it's fine. .NET object reference create this. Ah, there we go. So now it's created, passing along a reference to this class to it so that I've got it. Alright, good. Good, good, good. So now, right, that component will be a user activity train model. And I'll be able to interact with and call instance methods on it here that'll behave appropriately. So I'm going to make this an I user activity train client. Is that a thing? No, I can't do it here. Right. Right, because that is over here. And this project, the orchestrator project, that's the web project that hosts the server, is that references the standard features. So I can't reference something in this project, in the web server project, from here. I give a reference to a C-sharp class that is then accessible in JavaScript. Magic. Oh, it's magical. Indeed. Should it not be on parameter set? I don't know. That's a good question. Could be. If I was including this inside of another page, could be. I don't expect it to be. I expect this to be a standalone page. So I think I'm okay with that. I think. Um, I think what I should do is I should move this interface into my... Well, yeah, into my core here. Create a folder called clients and stash this in there. So it's just available everywhere. Because this is the base project that everything depends on. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, client. And I'm going to cut that. Come over here and we will create a new class. It's not even going to be a class, it's going to be an interface. Here it is. Do some quick fix up, get some using statements here. Thank you for the follow, Aletheia Island. Welcome. Appreciate you joining us. And I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, okay, I could add some comments here as to what these things are, but I think they're just. The, the names of these methods and the parameters 
pretty self-explanatory for them for right now. So I'm not, I'm not going to uh, change that. Now that's, I would like to have rename file to I user activity client, but it won't let me do that, will it? Go over here, F2, and boom goes the diamond. There we go. So now if I go back over to the hub, if I control dot on that, it found my using statement to create. Fantastic. Done. All right, one last thing. Um, this has got to be used in other places that I'm, I'm sure I broke. I'm sure I broke. Let me do a quick find and see if there's other places here that I can go fix it. Oh, yes. There is. Let's see. There's I user activity client. Let's fix up my reference there. So that should fix channel manager actor follower service actor here. If I control dot that, turn that into a using statement. Everything goes away. That looks all fixed. Services. Uh, we fixed that one. Good. Yeah. I think we're all right there now. All right. So now that that's over there, I can take my user activity train model and I can implement the same interface. I user activity client. And I want to put I disposable as the last interface in the chain because it's it's the lowest priority. It's a system one that I um, I want to reference and be able to know that it's out there. I, I like to order my implementations here with any base classes that you depend on then interfaces and i want to order them with uh my domain the things that i wrote any reference libraries and finally system items at the end this way you can see them and you kind of can can get some priority order to them right i know i own these ones first those are the ones that are most important to me as a business developer, right? If I was a framework developer, I'm most concerned about these. So I can kind of scan and identify the relative relationship between those various things. Um, Alethea Island says, a Second Life bot dev account. <laughs> oh my gosh. Second Life bot dev account. Interesting. Okay. Th this, is, this is going to be a, uh, a Twitch bot. But I guess you could do a second life bot, sure. Absolutely. Um, okay, so I've implemented I user activity client. Where did it? I told it to implement that, right? Did it put it down here in this region? It did. Why did it put it in that region? That feels like a mistake. Um, so there's my three methods and we'll figure out what to do with those um, but now I can call these and I need to implement the same thing inside my JavaScript Th this isn't actually going to be called directly from my hub okay Wh what's going to be called is the JavaScript and I need to relay those messages over to the C sharp library that can actually handle it line 29 needs a wait to get rid of green squiggles says blazer mr. Magoo here. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so these three methods, I'm actually, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to copy these, go over to my user activity, and I'm going to put these here. Even though it's C-sharp, it's inside JavaScript, and that feels ugly. That's okay. Um, I'm going to declare these as functions here. And I'm going to have them just do nothing for right now. By declaring these as functions here, I can have these same methods and just delegate directly to them from the um, SignalR client that's listening. Um, we've got a new follower. <laughs> I actually paid for WinRAR. Welcome. I appreciate you joining us uh, with a question. Have I done any React? No, I have not. Um, I liked. Uh, I've I've been in the framework game 
with, uh, with JavaScript for a long time. And if there's one thing I've learned is that frameworks come and go with JavaScript very, very quickly. You're gonna get committed to a framework and a year later, that's not the framework everybody uses. This is now the framework everybody uses. Whether it's Upshot, Knockout, Angular 1, um, Vue, Angular 2, Angular 4, React. Um, it changes very, very quickly to get committed to one framework. jQuery UI, jQuery, um, to get committed to one is means you're going to know that library very well, but if you don't have a foundation of good JavaScript, you are going to struggle when, when the technical community decides, you know what, this is the more in vogue framework they're going to use instead. Aurelia, there's another good one. Right. So nothing wrong with any of those frameworks. They're very good frameworks. They solve a lot of problems. For what we're doing, it, it's easy for me to just write some vanilla JavaScript. Svelte? I'm not familiar with Svelte. Um, so now I can execute these methods, and inside of each one of these methods, I can actually call the exact same method name on the component, right? So I could do component dot, right? Let me go back to that. I can say, so I have the op, the method. I can say invoke method async because, right, this is the object that was being, that was made available to me. Um, so I should be able to pass that along directly right I know I also need to in mark it, mark the methods with JS invocable let's make sure we have that on these so JS invocable right this is a marker it doesn't do anything for our C sharp interactions here inside the class but it makes it visible outside the class to the JavaScript Michael Jolly says I'm still holding hope that Holding out hope that VB script is going to make a comeback. Oh, my friend. VB script is broken. It's been, been disabled and removed from browsers. If you want to know which framework to use, just follow Steve Sanderson. I cannot agree with you more, Snoopaloopy. The guy's brilliant. Brilliant, and he knows what he's doing. So what I should be able to do here now is write in... Uh, Got to get this right. Um, it's invoke invoke method async and it's lowercase to start invoke method async the name of the method is right is going to be new follower and the argument i'm going to pass is new follower name and i should be able to just do this same type of delegation across invoke method async new subscriber and I'm going to pass this exact same array of arguments. So let me just copy. Done. And that should cross that, that process boundary, that programming language boundary, between the two. New cheer. And we'll pass the exact same arguments over to new cheer. That should work. That should do the thing. Um, we should write some tests around this. We should try and start this up and see what happens and see what we can do to mock some of these events happening. Excuse me. Coming out of that hub so that we can test and make sure that our widget behaves appropriately. But I'm going to save that for next time. I have a flight to catch. And I've still got to pack up. I've actually got to disassemble the studio here because I'm taking the studio with me to Chicago. They got pizza in the deep dish. You got the deep dish pizza and they got hot dogs. Gotta get to Chicago. That camel case in JavaScript triggers Stelzy a little bit. <laughs> I, I kind of agree with you. Um, all right, so let's add the changes. We've got some new things that we added here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna commit these. Let's, uh, let's make sure we're playing the Mario music here, right? For wrapping up. Um, started interop with JavaScript for the user activity train widget. And this is going to be really cool when we have it done. It's going to be a great example of passing and interacting back and forth. Did I get that right? Between JavaScript and .NET. In a practical way, 
that traffics those messages back and forth across the process boundary. I've pushed up those changes. You can find them out in the GitHub repository, execute exclamation point project out there if you'd like to see those changes. I will not be back tomorrow. Like I said, I'm going to be on the road. I have a workshop that I'm presenting tomorrow for some friends. So let's set up for our raid. Today, I think... I think we should raid... You know what? Can we raid somebody in the creative community today? Do you feel okay about that? She's been a big help to us. Let me execute. There's the raid command. If you're a subscriber, copy out that first line and put it on your... Control C, copy that. Get it onto your clipboard. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Copy out the second command and put it on your clipboard. Because today we're going to raid Fairy Wings. We haven't seen her in a while. She's playing some uh, Minecraft over there. Um, and it's always fun to see her and to interact with folks in the creative community. We want to support them in the various things that they're doing. Um, this video, like all my other videos, will be available on the YouTube channel as part of the archive. In a couple days, we'll get it loaded over there. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. I will be back again on Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, 1400 UTC. We're going to continue where we left off here, and we'll do some testing and some integration testing of this JavaScript C-sharp interop using Blazor. Get all the raid bots, Twitch. Here we go. Get ready to go. And I'll see you Friday. Take care, friends. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, get ready to say hi to Fairy Wings. We'll see you.